Similar to how heliocentric pseudoscientists have changed the very definition of the word level to mean curved, they have also done the same thing with the words up and down. Everyone intuitively knows and can readily demonstrate which way is up and which is down, just by pointing one finger to the sky and one to the ground. But globe defenders take umbrage with this simple meaning and insist otherwise. They claim the sky is not always up. On their model, the sky is all around their globe, so there's always sky beside you and sky below you as well. Similarly, on their model, the stars aren't all above us. Instead, stars are all around us, with just as many stars beside or below us as there are above. Merriam-Webster defines up as being toward a higher position or place, but then further specifies especially away from the center of the earth. Likewise, down is defined as toward or in a lower physical position, i.e. especially toward the center of the earth. These caveats about being toward or away from the center of the earth are necessary additions for life on a globe. The masses have been taught and now believe that up and down are simply subjective terms, so what is up for one person can be down for another. What is up for someone at the North Pole is down for someone else at the South Pole, and what is down for a third party at the equator isn't up or down, but perpendicular sideways for the people at the poles. This is why Australia has long been dubbed the land down under, because the masses are taught and now believe that places like Australia on the southern hemisphere of their globe Earth are physically upside down with respect to places like Europe in the northern hemisphere. That sentence will trigger knee-jerk rejection, however, because they have also been taught and now believe that since everything is subjective, that upside down doesn't exist. On the globe, everything and everyone is always right side up and they won't hear otherwise. Even when you make it clear that you are speaking in relative terms of two separate perspectives with relation to each other, they rarely relent. The fact remains, though, if you believe someone at the North Pole of a globe Earth is standing right side up, and another person at the South Pole of a globe Earth is also standing right side up, that means that relative to each other, one of them is standing upside down. That means that relative to the Northern Hemisphere, it rains upside down in the South, and relative to the Southern Hemisphere, planes fly upside down in the North. This is so conceptually absurd that globe believers refuse to address the contradictions and instead attempt to gloss them over with their mantra of upside down doesn't exist on a globe. In reality, however, everything on their tilting, wobbling, spinning space ball earth is upside down. And the only place everything could ever be right side up is on a level, stationary plane earth, where the sky and stars are always over your head and the ground is always under your feet. Imagine a man digging a hole straight down from the North Pole on a globe Earth. Imagine this man is immortal, immune to heat, and can dig indefinitely through anything. As the man continues to dig downwards for hundreds and then a few thousand miles, eventually he reaches the geometric center point of the globe. Now at this point, if the man continues to dig even a foot farther in the same direction of his same hole, globe apologists claim this man will now be digging upwards. Then, if he continues to dig the same direction of his same hole for 3,958 more miles, they claim he will pop out feet first at the South Pole. If there was already another man standing at the South Pole when he popped out, this means the two men would be upside down relative to one another. From their own perspectives, they would both always feel right side up. But when the man digging the hole somehow came out feet first at the South Pole, it would be revealed that they are and were always upside down with respect to one another. The only place up and down can have any objective meaning is on the geocentric flat earth model. Our earth plane of dense matter is aptly likened to the basement of the universe, where the thick foundation becomes increasingly dense downwards for at least eight miles, which is the farthest we have ever drilled. Above us, the sky is filled with an opposing density gradient of progressively lighter and lighter gases continuing upwards for 20 plus miles, 
which is the farthest balloons can reach before popping. On our earth plane, down is the direction of density, and up is the direction of lightness. The ground will always be down, whereas the sky and luminaries will always be up, circling over and around us, unlike in the globe model where the sky and luminaries are allegedly all around us. In reality, though, you have never and will never see sky or luminaries below you. Rain always falls down from the same direction above, and people standing in Antarctica are not upside down relative to those at the North Pole.